Welcome to another IB Environmental Systems in Societies video. Today's topic is the SL content for 3.2 Human Impact on Biodiversity. In this video, we're going to examine how human activities are affecting biological diversity across the planet. We'll investigate both direct and indirect threats to biodiversity, discuss how invasive species disrupt ecosystems, learn about conservation status classifications, and explore why common resources often face unsustainable exploitation. Let's get into it. Biological diversity is being adversely affected by both direct and indirect human influences. Direct threats specifically target individual species like overharvesting, poaching, and the illegal pet trade. These activities intentionally remove organisms from their natural habitats for human use or profit. Indirect threats, on the other hand, impact many species simultaneously through broader environmental changes. These include things like habitat loss, where forests are cleared for agriculture or development, climate change caused by greenhouse gas emissions, various forms of pollution like plastic waste and chemical runoff, and the introduction of invasive alien species that disrupt native ecosystems. Overharvesting occurs when humans extract resources faster than natural populations can recover. A classic example that we've already studied in ESS is the North Atlantic cod fishery collapse in the 1990s. For centuries, these waters supported abundant cod populations, but industrial fishing technologies led to massive harvests beginning in the middle of the 20th century. By 1992, fish populations had declined by 90% from historical levels. This dramatic collapse demonstrates how quickly overharvesting can devastate a population when it exceeds the species' reproductive capacity. Poaching is the illegal hunting and capture of wildlife, and poaching threatens many species with extinction. Elephants are killed for their ivory tusks, Pangolins are killed for their scales that are used in traditional medicine, tigers for their skin and bones, and rhinos for their horns. Wildlife trafficking has become a multi-billion dollar criminal enterprise around the world. The impacts extend beyond just population declines. Poaching often targets the largest or healthiest individuals, which disrupts breeding patterns and reduces genetic diversity in the remaining population. The illegal wildlife trade operates through complex international networks. This map shows the main international routes for trafficking great apes. Species are typically captured in biodiversity-rich regions like Central Africa. Then, they're transported through major transit hubs and sold in markets across Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. This global trafficking network demonstrates how consumer demand in one part of the world can drive species extinction in another part of the world. The illegal pet trade threatens biodiversity by removing animals from their natural habitats for the exotic pet market. This trade targets birds, primates, and reptiles valued for their rarity or their appearance. Beyond reducing wild populations, this trade undermines legitimate conservation efforts and international protection agreements like CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. When animals are removed from their ecosystems, it disrupts natural population dynamics and can trigger cascading effects throughout the rest of the food web. Habitat loss represents one of the most significant indirect threats to biodiversity. When natural environments are degraded or destroyed, countless species lose their homes. This map shows the dramatic reduction in orangutan habitat on Borneo between 1930 and 2004. Agricultural expansion, particularly the palm oil plantations, has fragmented the remaining forest. When habitats are fragmented, populations become isolated from one another, that means that then genetic diversity decreases and species become more vulnerable to other threats like disease and climate change. Climate change poses a unique threat to biodiversity because species must either adapt, migrate, or face extinction. This map shows regions where biomes would need to shift at least one kilometer per year to keep pace with changing climate patterns. Remember, plants can't get up and move the way animals can. So that means they have to move simply by dispersing their seeds and regrowing farther and farther from their native range. Climate change alters temperature and precipitation patterns, forcing species to adjust their ranges. It disrupts migration and breeding cycles. It increases extreme weather events and particularly threatens species that can't adapt quickly enough to these rapid changes. Pollution damages habitats and directly harms organisms in numerous ways. Ocean plastic pollution has become particularly problematic with microplastics now found throughout marine food webs. These tiny plastic fragments attract and concentrate other pollutants, and that enhances their toxicity. Through bioaccumulation and biomagnification, these pollutants become more concentrated at higher trophic levels. 
When consumed by marine animals, these contaminated microplastics release toxins that damage tissues and disrupt physiological functions, and that ultimately reduces biodiversity. This diagram illustrates how microplastics contribute to persistent organic pollutant toxicity through bioaccumulation and biomagnification. It starts with sorption, which is where pollutants attach to tiny microplastic particles. When marine organisms eat, they ingest these particles and the toxins are then released into their digestive systems. These persistent compounds then accumulate in tissues over time. That's bioaccumulation. As predators consume multiple contaminated prey, toxin concentrations increase dramatically at higher trophic levels, a process called biomagnification because the toxin concentration gets magnified at higher trophic levels. This biomagnification process means that top predators like sharks, tuna, and marine mammals experience the most severe toxic effects. Invasive alien species can alter existing ecosystem dynamics by completely transforming habitats and driving native species towards extinction. Invasive species reduce local biodiversity by outcompeting native species for limited resources. Without natural predators or pathogens to limit their growth, invasive populations can expand really rapidly. For example, the North American red-clawed crayfish has invaded waterways in the UK and Australia displacing native crayfish species. Invasive species can also introduce new diseases and parasites that native species haven't evolved defenses against, and that causes the native populations to decline. This map shows invasive marine species hotspots around the world. The highest concentrations appear along major shipping routes and in areas with busy ports. This pattern reflects one of the main pathways for invasive species. When vessels take on water in one port, and discharge it in another, they transport numerous marine organisms across oceans. Other invasion pathways include deliberate introductions for agriculture or for the pet trade. Climate change is exacerbating this problem by making previously inhospitable regions suitable for new invasive species. Most ecosystems face multiple human impacts at the same time. These pressures interact and amplify each other's effects. Let's examine how five major human impacts interact. Deforestation drastically reduces biodiversity and disrupts water regulation services. The disruption in water regulation can contribute to desertification, the spread of dry, unproductive landscapes driven by deforestation, overgrazing, and poor irrigation practices. Climate change from human activities accelerates these processes and creates conditions where invasive species can thrive because of the disruptions to the established ecosystem dynamics. As ecologically productive land becomes more and more stressed, over-harvesting removes key species from ecosystems, further reducing resilience. All these impacts reinforce one another, creating positive feedback loops that accelerate biodiversity loss. That's it for the first part of our video on 3.2, Human Impacts on Biodiversity. In our next video, we're gonna take a look at IUCN categories and their criteria. We're gonna examine stakeholder perspectives on conservation and explore some case studies of extinct, threatened, and recovered species. Until next time, happy learning.